Hello, everyone, and welcome to this presentation of an Introduction to ROMA Implementation for Boards, a video series for Community Action Board members. Uh, this presentation will talk about the results-oriented management and accountability framework um, in the context of what Community Action Agency boards need to know about the ROMA system. I'm Jarl Crocker. I'm Director of Training and Technical Assistance here at the Community Action Partnership, and I'm joined on this presentation by Courtney Kohler, our Senior Associate uh, here at the Partnership, Dr. Barbara Mooney, who is Director of the Association of Nationally Certified Roma Trainers and Implementers, and Terry Bearden, who is President of the Association for Nationally Certified Roma Trainers and Implementers, and the COO of the Arkansas Association of Community Action Agencies. This presentation is part of a larger series on implementing ROMA uh, for boards that does a deep dive into that results-oriented management and accountability framework. Um, these uh, presentations are designed to help you understand how your community action agency can increase its capacity and results and how to meet and exceed the organizational standards. Each of these videos goes into a component of that ROMA process and helps you you as board members understand your roles and responsibilities in helping your agency uh, achieve those outcomes and also make sure that you're meeting those organizational standards. Um, what you see up on the screen in front of you is a representation of that ROMA cycle. And in this series of presentations, we will be identifying the key principles and practices that are part of this performance management system that's unique to our community action network. And again, the system is known as the Results-Oriented Management and Accountability Framework, or ROMA. Um, in, the, in this video and the others in this series, we will show how the ROMA cycle is embedded into the organizational standards and we'll make reference to the video series that is specifically for the organizational standards. Uh, we know that there are some differences in how public and private community action agencies are governed, uh, but in both cases, the board has a role in assuring that the agency is being operated with a results-oriented perspective. As you look at the ROMA cycle, you can think of many other business models that have a similar approach to this, and it all comes down to being focused on the outcomes that you are trying to achieve as an agency and an organization. Um, to begin, uh, with the, uh, at the top of the ROMA cycle, you can see that the organization has to find out or verify what the community needs are and what resources are already in place. Um, this is the foundation on which the organization plans and carries out its mission or work. Then, of course, the organization actually does its work, moving along to that next stage of the ROMA cycle, the implementation of services and strategies, and that's that five o'clock uh, spot on the cycle. The process for observation and documentation of the work of the staff are identified in the planning section, but carried out as the work is done and the staff sees what actually happened as a result of their work. Finally, you consider and evaluate what was accomplished, and that leads to finding new questions to ask about needs and resources, and back to doing the assessment of the work. And of course, this cycle is always ongoing, and so board members need to keep that big picture in mind as they think through the organization's outcomes and how it's improving its work. Uh, it's important to point out that these basic steps are not always done in the sequence that they're shown up on the screen. Sometimes the movement is clockwise, as originally shown, uh, but sometimes it's counterclockwise or moving across that ROMA cycle. Um, and again, this is because what we learn while we are implementing services and strategies will affect what we know about the community's needs and resources. The results we observe and report will impact our reporting and the analysis of our data will change how we implement uh, those services and strategies. So these are just a few of the connections, but hopefully you can see that these elements must be interacting in an ongoing way to produce good management and accountability. You're always moving through the Roma cycle as an agency, and you're always at multiple points uh, along that cycle as you look at different programs and services up to the agency level, and then finally considering uh, the big picture planning processes like your needs assessment and strategic plan. Strong agencies recognize that they cannot simply complete a community needs assessment every three years 
and on the off years, ignore the assessment of community needs. They recognize that while a strategic plan might be in place for three to five years, they need to review and update it regularly based on new information and results, and that is really the underlining message of the Roma cycle, that you always need to be focused on your results, you always need to be thinking about where you are on the Roma cycle, and keep your eye on making sure you're achieving those outcomes and looking for ways to continuously improve. So with that, I'm going to turn it over uh, for the rest of the presentation. Thanks, Charles. Um, this is Barbara Mooney from the Association of Nationally Certified Roma Trainers and Implementers. I'm going to kick off uh, this part of the uh, recording with a question about why a results orientation. Um, as Jarl mentioned, the business model of uh, that's represented by that Roma cycle um, is not unusual. It's it's a, a logical way to uh, run a business, but what is different is this concept of a results orientation, and this is really the focus of our performance management climate. And what does that even mean? Um, community action agencies have historically measured things like the number of food baskets they distributed, the number of children attending Head Start, number of families receiving some other service, or attending a class, but why is that not enough uh, for your agency to be reporting on? Well, I'm going to give you a little uh, example of uh, something from another field, from the field of baseball. So here's the situation. The team has finished last place in the prior season, and so uh, people aren't going to the game. There, there's been dwindling attendance. And so um, the team gets, um, gets on the social media and starts uh, promoting things like the following statistics. They say, oh, the outfielders ran three times more laps during spring training this year, or the pitchers threw twice as many pitches, or the batters took four times as much hitting practice. These are the kinds of things, including how what you hired new personnel, what kind of investments that you made, um, that that are similar to telling people how many services you have provided. But at the at the All Star break, um, even though the team is taking an average of 17 more swings per game, the fans really say, "So what." because the team is still in last place and there isn't a single player who deserves to be on the all-star team. The fans don't care about the process if they don't get results. And so that's what we're facing as well. Um, the board of directors of a community action agency is like the owner of a baseball team. You're responsible for making sure you have a winning team. And the executive directors like the manager and the funders, the community and the clients are like the fans and everyone wants to see results. If we just say how much service we produce, our fans will say, so what? We have to make it clear what to do, that what we do has an impact on the lives of the people that we serve. So it's important to be able to talk about those services. We're not saying that that's that you shouldn't also be able to identify the services, but the key here is to identify how the services and interventions have produced results and what has changed because of your agency's work. Uh, I'm going to turn the program over to Terry Bearden now. All right, thanks, Barbara. So let's talk about uh, where we are today in terms of ROMA. Let's start with uh, looking at ROMA and the organizational standards. Um, as of January 2016, the Community Action Organizational Standards became part of our new performance management framework, um, which was presented to the Community Services Block Grant, or CSBG, network by the U.S. Office of Community Services. Um, all of, it's important to remember that all of the ROMA principles and practices 
are actually embedded within the organizational standards. They're not two standalone uh, systems. And many, in fact, more than half of the organizational standards are directed at the actions of the community action agencies, boards of directors. Um, so through the organizational standards, our ROMA principles are reinforced, and these principles are expected to be supported and promoted uh, by the board. And there is additional information about how you can demonstrate the application of ROMA through the organizational standards. What's been called ROMA Next Generation is really a way of talking about an increased focus on the elements of ROMA. Um, and we can do that by using some new tools to assure that our network is implementing the full ROMA cycle uh, to constantly measure the achievement of results for individuals, families, and communities. So let's take a look at what's new and what's renewed uh, with ROMA Next Generation. We have the adoption of the National Community Action Theory of Change. Uh, which we're going to talk about next. Barbara's going to lead us through a discussion about that. And we'll also have a separate video segment about the National Theory of Change. Uh, and this is a way uh, that we've added to help our network talk about who we are and what we want to accomplish. Um, Roman Next Generation is also about a renewed focus on community change because it's more evident than ever before that community and family successes are related. You can't have family success in communities with no resources or opportunities. And Roma Next Generation is also about a renewed focus on analysis of data from all phases of the Roma cycle. It's not just about collecting data for reporting, but about considering how that data can be connected and used. Roma Next Generation is about using data for the continuous improvement um, and for utilizing and connecting our community needs assessment, our community action strategic plan, our state plans, and our annual report. Um, as we showed, the Roma cycle is not to be taken just as a clockwise series of actions, but it's important to recognize that those actions are going to be ongoing uh, and integrated. So we want to also remember that uh, the intention to integrate all aspects of the performance management framework, which includes the organizational standards. Um, and the next slide is actually going to identify all the parts of our performance management framework. So we have our organizational standards. We have automated state plans. Um, we have now state and federal accountability measures. We have the American Community Satisfaction Index. And we have our new CSPG annual report, which has been approved by the Office of Management and Budget, or OMB. Um, and this new report includes new national performance indicators at family and community uh, levels. So next, I'm going to turn it back over to Barbara, and she's going to provide an overview of our national theory of change. Um, so when we first started talking about establishing a theory of change uh, for our network, uh, there was a lot of uh, grumbling in the network. Well, what's this about? Why do we need this? But as we uh, as we have worked towards producing this document, uh, I, I think that we've all seen the value of having uh, a one-page graphic that can represent the complexity of the Community Action Network. So if you're a board member and someone says, well, what is Community Action? Um, oftentimes, uh, the public sees one of your uh, main programs like Head Start or Weatherization, but they don't see all of the work that your community action agency does. And so this is a, a, a one-page uh, version of all of the things that are included in our work at Community Action. I'm going to go through the pieces of this graphic um, to talk about them uh, so that that it's clear what this graphic represents. So at the bottom of the graphic is this foundational statement. Uh, it it says uh, that the 
community action network of over a thousand local agencies have the capacity to achieve results. Um, it acknowledges that our network really has this common um, understanding and that it's based on the receipt of the community service block grant as its primary funding. Uh, we, we know there's a lot that goes into maintaining high performing uh, community action agencies. Um, you know, the, the facilities, the having a place for the staff to work uh, and meet with the customers, um, having the kind of direct service and management staff that has the proper training uh, to make sure that they can do their work um, and so on. But um, the, the network has to maintain those efforts in order to um, Keep, to keep services together. So understanding that is an essential part of this graphic, but also connecting uh, those efforts of individual agencies to um, a single message and one voice across the country uh, to advocate on behalf of low-income persons um, really is uh, what this talks about. We are trying to mobilize communities to fight poverty and to do that with um, our partners at the state associations, the state offices, and the federal partners that we have. Um, the next part of the graphic that I'll talk about are these core principles. Um, since the beginning of the Community Action Network um, back in uh, 1964 uh, when we first got federal funding, uh, there have been some common principles that have identified the unique approach of uh, community action to the problems that are associated with poverty. Uh, these were the ones that were most common among the whole network. Your particular agency will have some principles that, um, that you've created over time that are specific to your community. But overall, we know that poverty is not just about a lack of money. Of course, that's the basic truth. But it's also about a lack of other kinds of resources. And there are resources in communities that are limited in the access. Um, think about children in school and how some children can't take advantage of sports or clubs because they don't have funds or transportation. So that's just one example. But um, others are lack of skills. Um, and we'll be thinking about a lot of these things as we come back. Uh, to talk about, but um, these are the basic core principles from across the network. The other large section of the graphic shows that we have an emphasis on accountability. Now, we value accountability at the local level, at the state level, and at the federal level. And um, this is really part of, an, of another board series that's um, designed to explore organizational standards. And we'll, we'll reference them uh, so that you can learn more if you want to about uh, different pieces of the standards. But we, we want to know how the network operates, and specifically you would want to know how your agency operates, how well does it operate, and also what difference do we make. We know that the individual goals are related to the family goals. Individuals can't work at good paying jobs if there are no jobs in the community. So we know there's an interconnectedness there. The next section of the graphic talks about the services and strategies by what we call domains. Um, some human services uh, so human service providers focus only on one aspect of these domains, like the WIOA program uh, focuses on employment. Um, you might think of schools and training focus on education. HUD has a focus on housing-related issues. But community action uh, typically weaves these different kinds of funding and resources together to provide a range of services that are designed to address multiple issues. Um, not every local agency addresses all of these domain areas. Your agency would be um, basing its work on the community needs assessment 
and um, that Gerald talked about earlier, and the resources. But we wanted to show that even though the services and strategies are listed in a linear fashion in the uh, theory of change graphic, that really these are interrelated, uh, the connections between employment and education and housing and so on are very, um, uh, are numerous and uh, you, you have to think about how all of those domains working together are going to improve a person's life. So um, we'll talk in another section about local theories of change and how uh, we might focus in on a certain number of these. And then at the very top of the um, theory of change are the three national goals. These are the goals that we have for the individuals, families, and communities um, uh, that represent our low-income people, uh, and these are the three national goals, that individuals and families move out of poverty uh, or that, as the goal says, achieve economic security and that they're stable uh, as they do that, um, and that they're engaged in their communities and that the communities are healthy and offer uh, opportunities. So that's just a brief overview of the um, the national theory of change. Uh, I'm turning this back over to Terry. All right, thank you. Um, as we mentioned uh, in this video series, we're going to be discussing key elements of each phase of the Roma cycle, and we're going to make sure that we focus on board roles and responsibilities. So on this slide, you'll see a brief uh, description of different segments of the Roma cycle as well as on the next slide. Um, it's clear that implementing the full Roma cycle requires an organizational culture that understands the purpose and the value of performance management and that uses data for decision making. However, fostering and supporting this kind of culture uh, is going to take leadership from the board as well as from agency executives and management staff. So we hope that viewing this series will provide you with some foundational knowledge on which to build your skills to accomplish these goals. Um, and it's important to remember that once you consider what happened and what it means to your agency and the families and communities that you serve, then you may have new questions uh, that the next round of assessment will help you to answer. And those questions and answers will be important in the next round of planning and so on. So these processes are very uh, interconnected and related to each other. So we, we do want to ask you to take some action. Um, first, we want you to make sure that you understand the basic principles and practices uh, that define Roma. And this board series should provide you with the foundation that you, that you need to do that. Um, we also want you to consider how your agency will use the services of a uh, Roma certified trainer and or implementer to help you assure that you're using the full cycle, the full Roma cycle. Um, you're going to have to develop some processes to enable you to get feedback from the certified Roma trainers or implementers, and you're going to need to consider how you're going to incorporate that feedback into your ongoing activities related to assessment, planning, delivering services, uh, reporting, and analysis. So consider some ideas about how to assure full ROMA implementation, uh, which is actually Organizational Standard 4.3, and how your organization is going to meet and exceed uh, all of the organizational standards. So a few ideas on how you could do that uh, would be to create a calendar for the board-related uh, activities within ROMA and the organizational standards, and to create board member uh, committees for various aspects that may need additional t attention but don't require the full board to be involved in those processes. Um, so again, we hope that you will take advantage of this entire series as you uh, really take a look at ROMA Next Generation implementation. Uh, so now I'm going to turn it back over to Jarl uh, to say a few words as we close this video. All right. Well, thank you, Terry. Um, just wanted to let everyone know of some additional resources that are available 
um, on the Roma for Boards training series, as well as on our website at www.communityactionpartnership.com. Um, there are um, numerous resources that we have in our resource library on board governance, um, as well as Roma. Um, and then, of course, encourage you to check out the remaining modules within this series. Um, so thank you, Jarl, Barbara, and Terry. We appreciate your time presenting today. And thank you, Community Action Agency board members, for your time and service to Community Action.